application here for creating and managing surveys. Now, each survey has many questions, as you can see here, and each question has many possible answers. Now, the problem is that when I go to edit the survey, in the form, the only thing I can change is the survey's name. Instead, I want to be able to edit the questions and answers in the survey as well, all in a single form. Now, the tricky part is that questions and answers are separate models. You can see in my application here, the survey model has many questions. And if I look in the question model, this has many answers. And I also have an answer model, which belongs to a question. So I have three different models here, and a couple has many associations, and I need to manage all of these models in a single form. Fortunately, Rails provides a method called accepts nested attributes for, which allows us to easily manage associated records in a single form. So if I want to manage questions inside of my survey form, I just have to pass in a call to accepts nested attributes for questions like that. Now, if you have an attribute accessible call in your model, like I do here, you will also need to modify this with the name of the association, in this case, questions, followed by underscore attributes so that the attributes can be set. And then next, I'll go into the form view for my survey. And right now I just have a field for the survey's name, but I also want to add fields for the questions association here. And so what will happen is that for each question on the survey, this block will be called, uh, passing in a form builder for each question. Now I'm going to wrap the question fields in a field set tag. And inside of here, I'm going to add a call to builder to make a text area for editing the questions content attribute. Now I also want a label, so I'll add that. And I'll name the label question and add a break inside of here as well. So now when I go back to my survey form and hit reload on this page, I have a field for editing each question. And I can try making a change here. I'll say to life, the universe and everything, and update the survey, and that works. Our question has been updated inside of our survey. Now it would be nice if there was some way to remove questions as well from this form, and one way to do that is using a checkbox. So going back to my form template, I'll add a checkbox underneath each question, and the key here is to name this attribute underscore destroy, and that will automatically remove that question. So I'll also add a label for this and say, call it remove question. And I also want to add a break tag underneath the uh, text area. Now destroying records using nested attributes is disabled by default, but we can enable it by passing in the allow destroy option and set that to true. And then reloading this page shows us our remove question checkbox and checking it and clicking update survey destroys that question. That works. Now we still need some way to edit the answers as well inside of our form. So we should have that underneath each question. So we basically need to repeat the same process, but for questions and answers. So I'm going to copy this nested attributes for call for my survey model and paste it in the question model and have it work on the answers association instead. And also in my attribute accessible call, uh, add the answers uh, attributes line into there. And back inside of my form view template, I need to add another call to fields for and make it for answers and nest it under the questions. But before I do that, I'm going to move this into a partial to help clean things up. So I'll call this question fields. And I'll clean this partial up a bit, removing that because we don't need it, and adding an F option and passing in the builder object into that partial, but as an F variable. So I need to go inside of that question partial and change this to use the F variable and also clean this up a little as well. So now I can copy the uh, fields for call inside of this form template and paste it inside of my question partial here, but have it based off of answers instead of questions. And I'll make a partial called answer fields as well. So I'll make that file called underscore answer fields.html.arb. Now I basically want to do the same thing as the question fields partial here, so I'm just going to paste in the content of that, but remove the fields for call and do some rearranging here. Um, let's make this a text field instead of a text area and we take out that break and this break as well, and we'll call this answer instead of question. All right, let's see if this works. I'll reload the page and there are my answer fields. And let's try editing some of them here. I'll say uh, three plus here instead and choose to remove uh, this answer, update the survey. And there we go, there are the changes. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to add and remove these records using JavaScript. 
Let's focus on removing first. So instead of using a checkbox here, I want to have a remove link and clicking that makes it disappear. So instead of a checkbox here, I'm going to store this destroy attribute in a hidden field instead. So this way we can modify it with JavaScript. And I'm going to have a link to tag here that says remove and I'll just pass in a hash since we don't want to do anything without JavaScript. And I'm going to add a class called uh, remove fields so that we can tap into it in JavaScript. And I'm going to do this inside of the assets surveys coffee script file. First, I'll make sure the DOM is loaded by calling jQuery. And then I'll grab the uh, form element and listen to the on click event on that uh, remove fields link. Now, the reason I'm doing this approach instead of just calling click directly on remove fields is because we'll need to insert this remove fields link dynamically later on. So then an event is passed into a function into here. So when the user clicks a link, we need to change the hidden field. So I'll grab uh, this link and take the previous input element, which is the type of hidden, and then set the value to one. So that'll be uh, true. And then we need to hide this field set. So I'll call this and closest and take the field set. So that'll go up the DOM tree and grab the nearest field set and hide that. And finally, we don't want to fall through to the normal link behavior. So I'm going to call prevent default on this event. All right, let's try this out. When I reload the page, I now have remove links and clicking on one makes the field set disappear and submitting the form, uh, the link, the answer is no longer there because I deleted it. Now we could apply the same thing to the remove question checkbox, but I'm going to leave that as is so this example app shows both approaches. Next, let's focus on adding questions and answers through a link and some JavaScript. Here's where things get a little trickier. Now inside of my question partial is where I'm listing out the answer fields. And underneath here is where I want a link called add answer. And this actually has a lot of logic that needs to go inside of here. So I'm going to actually move this into a helper method called link to add fields. And there are several variables we'll need to pass in here. One is the F variable, which is the form builder for this question. And another is the name of the association we're trying to add to, in this case, answers. So now I just need to create this link to add fields helper method. And I'm going to do that inside of my application helper module. And there is quite a bit of code here. And to speed things along, I'm just going to paste this in, but I'll walk you through it. So this takes those same three arguments, the name of the link, the form builder, and the name of the association. And the first thing I want to do here is build an instance of that association record. So in this case, I'm taking the object of the form builder, which is a question instance and calling the association method on that, which will be answers, taking the class of that, so that's the answer model, and calling new on that to build a new answer instance. And then next I'm grabbing Ruby's object ID off of this, uh, just to generate a unique value that I'll use later on, but really this could be anything you want. And then I'm calling fields for on this form builder, just like I did in the partial, passing in the answers association, but this time I'm passing in that answer instance into here, so it will build for fields for that, and I'm passing that unique ID as the child index. And then I'm just rendering out the partial for this association, which in this case is the answer fields partial and passing in that form builder. And then finally, I'm generating a link and returning that. And I'm giving it the class of add fields. So I'll tap into this through JavaScript and I'm providing some data attributes on this as well. One is the unique identifier that I generated earlier and also all the field data that I generated and notice I'm calling gsub on this to strip out any new line characters. And this has a nice side effect of handling the HTML escaping properly as well. All right, if you didn't understand all of this, don't worry too much. I'll provide the source code in the show notes of this episode. So let's move on to the JavaScript and edit this CoffeeScript file. So I'll paste in the code for this as well, but it's pretty simple. So here I'm listening to the click event for that add fields link that we created in the helper. And first I'm storing the current time. And I'm also generating a regular expression using this link's data ID attribute. So that's going to be the unique identifier we created in that helper. And then I'm going to insert the fields before this current link. So I'm taking the fields data off of that link and replacing the regular expression, which is that unique identifier with the current time. So this way, each field will have its unique own index based off the current time. All right, let's see this in action. Reloading this page shows us that add answer link 
And when we click on it, we get a new answer field that's inserted dynamically and provided a unique index based off of the current time. And we can provide a value here and cl clicking update survey creates that new answer. So it works. And then we could do the same thing for the questions as well. Going into my form template, I'll add a link to uh, add fields call in here like we did before and saying uh, add a question and then passing in our form builder object and the questions association. And now when I go to edit our survey, there's our add question link and clicking on it shows our new question. And so we can type in anything we want in our question and then click submit. And there's our question with our answer. Now what we've built here will work great for creating surveys as well. I can choose to make a new survey here and I can add questions and add answers just like before and fill them in. There we go, that looks good. And now create the survey and that works. Well, that finishes up this episode on making a form for managing associated model records. I hope you find this useful.